Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, I want to remind you to enter our giveaway for Paper Mario the Origami King. Uh, we will be giving away a copy at the end of the month. To enter, you just need to comment on this video, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell icon and set it to all notifications. If you do this on every single video from now through the end of the month, you get additional entries, and I wish all of you luck. Today we're going to be talking about something that uh, is, is near and dear to my heart in some ways, but also um, a little disappointing. So we all know that E3 didn't happen this year. They tried to replace it with some summer thing, and then everyone backed out. Uh, now there's been like the Summer Games Fest hosted by Jeff Keighley. Uh, there's been uh, this Ubisoft Forward event, which was like their E3 replacement event. Uh, yesterday, we had Sony do their own PlayStation 5 reveal event. Uh, you know, we have something coming up from Xbox later this month as well. Maybe even, uh, you know, a supposed rumored Nintendo Direct on July 20th. So we have more and more announcements coming. But... Uh, there was a big thing when E3 was canceled this year, a kind of a permeating uh, opinion uh, that was basically taken as a fact. And that was, with E3 gone, companies are going to find out that they don't need E3, that uh, they can get just as much sales without E3, that they can generate maybe even more hype by doing their own events. And then, uh, yeah we would just end up not having E3 needing to come back. Now, yes, E3 has already announced they are coming back. They do have an event scheduled for next year. There's going to be some changes. There seems to be changes every year with E3. I don't know what the ESA is doing at this point. And obviously, E3 is a near and dear event to my heart as a gamer, as I guess you could say a member of the media. Um, I've attended it three, to three of the last four E3s I've been to, uh, one of them when I was an actual editor-in-chief and journalist at Zelda Informer back in 2016. Then I went again in 2018 and 2019 and obviously there wasn't one this year to go to um and i've had a really good time every time i've gone and we've gotten a lot of views on all of the content that i make during that time because we get to play exclusive demos i get to talk about my experiences with it um you know like why were people at my channel getting hyped for things like i don't know ninjala which recently came out well because of my experience with ninjala back in 2018 so the thing is e3 has always been really healthy for the channel in terms of viewership and it's also been just something i generally enjoy as a gamer uh, but obviously there's been a lot of controversy with e3 over the years mostly in so much that uh it felt like it was getting worse and less needed, and Nintendo Directs were kind of at the forefront of this, but then you also had the PSX event that happens later in the year, and it just started to feel like uh, E3 was kind of antiquated in some ways, plus there were some really terrible press conferences. But uh, this is the first summer where there wasn't an E3, and every company was left to fend for themselves and, and do whatever they feel like, and I'm left sitting here, um, despite, you know, what I think Jeff Keighley has actually done a really good job with his Summer Game Fest. Um, I think the Ubisoft Forward was okay for the most part. Uh, nothing to really knock your socks off with. Uh, and EA's little event that they did the, the before was just okay. Um, everything just feels like companies are just being lazy um, in a way because they're not building the kind of hype that you would see with E3. And in that sense... It feels like, at least to me personally, that E3 has not been replaced. Um, we all assumed that these companies would get their acts together and realize that E3 isn't needed. But now, after seeing a lot of the stuff already happen, and I know there's still some more coming. Yes, the Nest Nintendo Direct could kill it. Yes, the, the Microsoft event could kill it. Yeah, we're supposed to supposedly, rumor has it, get a PlayStation 5 price point reveal today. Now, that's cool. And the PlayStation 5 reveal event was fine. It was okay. Like the actual reveal event was, what was, was it was decent. All right. Like it, I'm not gonna sit here and act like it wasn't good, but it didn't feel as hyped as revealing a system at E3 has felt like in the past. And I think what happened here is that companies, you know, Sony was never planning to be at E3 anyways. That's what makes it so weird that I, it, it just didn't feel as hype. Is E3 it feels like it's more needed to happen next year then maybe it's felt like it's been needed for a long time. The ESA basically got everything to go their way so far. Essentially, the ESA was probably scared that companies would just back out of E3 like crazy and realize they could do things on their own. And instead, a lot of us gamers, a lot of us media, a lot of, a lot of people just left out here being like, eh, this has not really been that great of a summer. Or Even though we're getting you know new announcements more often spread throughout the summer, none of it is you know blowing our minds and, and this is heading into next gen like it shouldn't be that way so it feels like 
Yeah, E3 hasn't been replaced because nobody's doing as good of a job as a single industry event does. Uh, and now I'm actually sitting here at home begging for E3 to come back and for Sony and everyone else has to jump full head into it next year because I'm sorry, the stuff you guys are doing on your own is not uh, working out as well. Even the terrible press conferences that sometimes have happened with Ubisoft and EA and, and Sony the last time they were at E3, their, their presser wasn't that good. Even those press conferences, to me, built more hype than what's happening this summer as a, a gamer. And maybe it's just because you could excuse a bad press conference from one because there would be good press conferences from another. And that is something uh, that has to do with the hype cycle for gamers. Like when you have when you squeeze all the press conferences and all the gaming news into like a one-week span, uh, what happens is if one company disappoints, another company lifts everyone up. So it, it, there, there's an effect here where, oh, if uh, – if this is bad, Nintendo's will be good. Or if Sony's is bad, Xbox's will be good. Or if Xbox and Sony are bad, maybe Ubisoft kills it this year. Maybe Bethesda kills it this year. Except, like, you would end up forgiving other companies for not necessarily killing it because other companies would be killing it around that same time. And since most of these games come to all platforms except Switch, it was kind of a, hey, you know what? Yeah, maybe it didn't look so good for this company or that company, but all these games are coming to the platforms we play anyways. Um, and so we're, we're left sitting here um in this weird space in july right we're in the middle of july and we just it, to me it kind of feels like e3 is missed and maybe i'm alone in that thought i'm, I'm not exactly sure uh, if anyone else agrees with me but i miss e3 um i find myself wishing that uh e3 was here and I didn't think I was going to feel that way at this point, despite the fact that I liked going to E3. I thought it was it was a nice thing for the channel, for you guys. Get some, get some different content compared to other YouTubers that might not go to E3. I still just, I, I find myself um, wondering, you know, did we show a lack of appreciation for what E3 really was? Um, I think many of us just assumed it could easily not exist and everyone could just do Nintendo Directs and call it good. Uh, but now even Nintendo's not doing it. I get it. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and that affects things. There's game delays. All the, I, I understand that the pandemic has a huge effect on all of this. That's why we don't even have an E3. But honestly, as as much as E3 was getting, you know, quote-unquote worse, it was still better than this, uh, in my opinion. Maybe you guys completely disagree, and you think I'm way off base on this. Maybe, I'm, maybe I literally stand alone in this thought. But, man... I would have rather had an E3 this year than anything else that's happened so far. And this isn't, you know, no offense to Jeff Keighley with, with, with his, you know, summer games thing. I know Jeff Keighley wasn't going to go to E3 anyways this year because he was going to do this summer game fest thing. And that's fine. And I think what he's done is fine. Just like I, I think his Game Award show is good. But none of it's as good as, as just a pure E3. So um, E3 will be back next year. So we'll see if all the companies continue to support it, or most of the companies. Uh, it'd be nice to see Sony get back on board. I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. Uh, but I just, I, I'm disappointed, I suppose. I expected more. I thought this summer was just going to be big event after big event after big event that we would usually get in a week, spread across all summer, and it would just be awesome as we just get all this massive gaming news all the time. But to be clear, there's been good, you know, news we've got Far Cry 6 and like all, like there's been gaming news happening. It's just not the same. And I miss what once was just a year ago, let alone what has been for 20, 30 years uh, with E3s. So, I don't know. You guys let me know what you think about this down in the comments below because I'm just one voice out in the crowd speaking my mind. Maybe you guys vehemently disagree. You don't miss E3. You think it's a waste of time. Everyone should just keep doing the digital stuff. Who cares? Games get announced on the announced. Just drop them on Twitter or whatever. It's fine if you prefer that method of stuff. And I feel like um, I don't know how sales are going to be impacted in the end because that'll be the big, you know, hey, our, our, it's like the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla going to sell less because we didn't have an E3. I have no idea. Um, but what I do know is personally... This summer game announcement, everyone doing their own thing, isn't working for me. Um, I'm still going to pay attention. Uh, as, as a content creator, you would figure it would be awesome because I've got a billion different events I can live stream. And I know I haven't streamed most of them because I have children and they're home. And I, you know, I got jobs. I can't just always drop everything for all these events. So for me personally, it's actually easier to like take a week off, schedule babysitters, and like you know take care of business. But um, just in general, this is just a a tough time um 
I, I guess I almost say tough time to be a gamer because it's a great time to be a gamer because a lot of us have more time to game than ever before. Uh, but I, I think it's just a tough time um, to enjoy the new cycle of gaming uh, when there just isn't that much excitement around it. Like even when you get hyped, we're just let down a lot. Um, so like even the next Nintendo Direct, you know, if there is a legit Nintendo Direct coming this month, we're going to get hyped. How much do you think that Direct's going to live up to that hype? Because we haven't had one since September of last year. Like we had a, a mini, but we haven't had a true Nintendo Direct, a big Nintendo Direct since September of 2019 or almost to September of 2020. So, of course, if we get a Nintendo Direct, the hype will probably be the biggest it's ever been for a Nintendo Direct in the history of Nintendo Directs. No way in hell it's going to live up to that. And that's Nintendo's fault for not giving us anything. Um, not, you know, maybe it's because they were planning everything for E3 and then that got, you know, squashed and then that changed everything. I don't know. But uh, at least we have Microsoft's event later this th this month and I, maybe that'll deliver and I'm sure it'll feel nice. It just won't feel as nice as it would have during an E3. Anyways, I'm Nathan Robojets from the Center Prime. Be sure to comment down below, like the video, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell icon that gets you entered in the contest. Plus, you must like the video if you stuck around this long. So stay tuned for more content. Um, for those that stuck around to the end, uh, I am working on getting Yulia, my, my woman, um, my better half, to uh, join me for a live stream tonight uh, to celebrate her birthday. It was her birthday yesterday. Um, and uh, do a little late celebration of it today, kind of like we did for me. Um, you know, get, get some, some you know, drinky drinks on and, and have some fun and chit chat, maybe play some games or whatever the case might be, whatever we decide to do. I am working on that. It sounds like she's uh, pretty up for it, but uh, no guarantees yet. Um, Yulia flies by the seat of her pants, so we'll see. Uh, but hopefully uh, that's something I can get lined up for you guys. In fact, I'm going to be tidying up around the office a little bit here to make it more um, inviting to her to come down um, and not be like, oh, man, you need to clean your office. Like, yeah, I know. I know. But I got this. I got this. All right, folks. Uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.